Hello, everybody. My name is Anthony. Welcome back to Caesarian. Let's continue on for last off. So we're in a brand new chapter. Chapter, uh, well, turn three, it's called. I don't know how long each chapter is, because we're actually in the first one. I'm assuming there's going to be, like, some big event probably at the end of this turn, because, I mean, three is usually how many, like, of anything there are in video games. But currently, we're going to be having a nice barbecue, Frank. It was Saturday afternoon, my first break from work in what felt like years, and the weather couldn't have been more perfect. Trying to keep my mind off the upheaval sparked by the uh, circus assassination, I lit the backyard grill. Monica and Dino were out shopping for craft supplies, and I'd given the staff the day off. It was just myself and Frank at home. I wasn't sure how he felt at the, uh, about me at the moment, but I did know he felt about barbecued ribs. Our cook had left some marinating in the refrigerator. And sure enough, as soon as Frank glimpsed the grill in the meat, he stepped outside to join me. Ah. Uh, you know what? Come to spend some quality time with your old man, have you? Sure, if you can spare a few minutes out of your busy schedule. Hmm. I'm sorry, I know I've been around often lately, but I'm happy to see you now. It's okay. I know you've got the most stressful job in the country, and you've got to feed your family on top of it all. We both chuckled. I turned to tend the fire. Here, let me try. He grabbed the fan and started quickly waving it over the coals. The fire roared to life. He turned to look at me with the grin with the grin on his face, as if he was expecting praise. <laughs> I like these options where you can just be like such a piece of shit to your own son. Um, you know what? Not bad, son. Not bad, son. Thank you, sir. It was the utmost interest to fulfill our duties with precision. The grilling shall commence in exactly one minute and thirty-two seconds. That was spot-on impersonation of Lucian. We looked at each other for a second, then burst out laughing. I realized my throat was parched, and there was a six-pack of beer in the kitchen. You know what? Frank, why don't you get us a couple of beers? He looked at me in disbelief. You mean I can't? But Mom told me. He stopped himself, quickly ran inside, and returned with two beers. We cracked them open, clinked the bottles, and gazed out on the city skyline. For a moment, my thoughts flashed back to my childhood and my relationship with my own father. My father was a hard-working man, and always had her best interests in mind, or at least, that's what he always said, but he had a temper, and would lash out at my mother in fights I could hear from my bedroom. By the time I was Frank's age, we seldom smoke spoke. Now that I was president, I was facing more stress my, uh, than my father ever had. I would have to work hard not only to take my frustration and not take out my frustration on my family. Dad, can I ask you something? You know, we're family. You can ask anything. It's just, I feel like there's so much you're hiding uh, from me, about your past, about what's going on right now. Like dinner last uh, that night after the ball, you told me everything was under control. But it wasn't, was it? I know what's happened in the 20s. I learned about it in school. Now with the protests and the riots, is it going to be the same thing? Dad, is there going to be a civil war in Sorland? No, I'll never let that happen. Good. But what was it like back then? Uncle Peter said the two of you went through a lot. I'm not a kid anymore. You can tell me. Before I could gather my thoughts, uh, the familiar images started flashing before my eyes. I image of the soldiers advancing towards me and my friends, weapons drawn, uh, pe the people I knew, friends and neighbors being dragged out through the streets and murdered in alleyways, the shock and grief on the faces of fathers, mothered, and orphaned children. Those are dark times. It seems like it. But you're a grown man. Let's talk about it. Frank leads forward and share his eyes wide. Uh, you know what? I'll tell Frank about the coup of 1927. I was barely older than you were. Studying history at Deer University of College, I was a freshman, excited and young. I just left the classroom to go back home and I, as I heard the sound of multiple vehicles approaching the campus gates. As I got closer, I realized there were military camouflage tanks carrying hundreds of soldiers. The same soldiers that were supposed to protect Sorland citizens pointed their guns at us. They immediately took control of the facilities. One of my friends asked what was going on and was arrested immediately. More people got angry and gathered in protest. Frank kept looking. A shock looked on his face. The Frank, I'm not going to tell him exactly that I ran away like a coward. Seeing the crowd gathered, I knew something was going to happen, something bad. I thought it was impossible to go against our men and departed. I stopped there and turned my, my head away from Frank. It's time to tell him about the Civil War. It was right after I met your mother. We had both joined the same human rights group to push for change of the coup of 27. Over the next year, the state of Sorland deteriorated. People started taking sides, and I tried to stay away as much as I could. Then one night it happened. Two different factions of the army, one of them led by fascist General Ludian and the other by socialist General Ricard, started fighting against each other. It was a bloodbath. Nowhere was safe. Frank shits in his seat, visibly uncomfortable. People organized protests either for or against Ricard. 
I heard about the clash the next day. Many of my friends were shot or arrested. I isolated myself for months. And that's enough for today. I'm I'm so okay, it's okay. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have asked you about it. I know I don't understand how easy my life is sometimes. And one more thing though. I know you managed to not take any sides. Do you mind if I ask why? I didn't want to be part of the violence. Frank raises his eyebrows his curiosity still not satisfied, but sensing my reluctance to go on, he simply uh, nodded. Sorry for, for bombarding you with questions. I know I complain en enough sometimes, but my problems are nothing compared to what you went through. I'm here to listen to them no matter what they are. Before Frank could say anything else, or the front door unlocked, Dina and Monica's voice and sounds of rustling shopping bags filled the house. Okay, Frank, I need you to chug that beer because your mom cannot know I gave it to you. All right, I'll be upstairs until dinner. Frank went inside and dashed upstairs. I took a long sip from my beer, looked at the city, and the now setting sun. I hoped that talking to Frank about my past had been the right decision. Part of me felt like it was some sort of burden had been lifted. But I had the same nightmare again that night. Look, son, again, son, I just need you to, like, to chug it, okay? Do we have anything here? Uh, Elwood Rail uh, Railway. It's reported to be work. Okay, I think things will be going for the railroad. USP reports. It remembers the USP, which is the United Sortland Party, which our party. Led by Albin Calvin. Am I still not the leader? I thought I was the leader of the party. Anyways, that's, that's fine. Where is our next exclamation point? Over here in the small town in the Bell. Anything over here that I have to be worried about? No, just recessions hitting the farmers. Eh, I'm, I'm sure the farmers will get over it. Okay, apparently the Bell needs some more hospitals. We can definitely, we can worry about that in the future. I was traveling to the snow-covered city of Narbel and Nargas region of the... Uh, for the Rural Development Forum, organized by the Ministry of Health and Ministry of Education. The mountain city of Narbel had agreed to it. It's mostly regarded as one of the poorest cities in Sorland. Its people were hard, hardy and wary. Even after discovering the natural resources in the area, years of neglect by central government were apparent on the buildings and the general infrastructure. Natural resources, namely gas and oil, were now under control of, of Gaslam, which elevated the corporation to a place of power. Uh, Gaslam is one of the largest corporations. Sorland extracts natural, natural gas... Initially, several investors from United Katana had started the company with a joint venture. Okay. My task in this forum was mainly symbolic. Fake smiles and handshakes with oil barons, many of local politicians, but most importantly of all, to make sure that Nebel does not feel like it was forgotten by the government. The scenery so far, however, was a reflection of Narbel's neglect. Main roads to the city were not maintained well. There were many bumps and empty, discolored spots in the in the asphalt. Navigating and swerving to avoid any uh, inconveniences, our motorcade finally started nearing the city. As if my discomfort from the bumpy ride was apparent to him, Sergei rolled down the partition window. Oh, we're arriving at Hotel West in a few minutes, sir. Uh, thank you for letting me know. Any time, it is my duty. After a moment, Sergei started to smile underneath his mustache. You know what? H how is life, Sergey? Sir, I just wanted to say it's been a great these past two months. As you know, my wife Susan recently gave birth to her son, sir, and now my daughter is just starting to uh, start out a very good high school in Hosslord. That's great news, Sergey. I'm happy for you. I appreciate it, sir, truly. I was worried that I wouldn't be able to afford a good private school if she scored less on the entrance exams, but I shouldn't have made the insecurity get to me. Erica smirks me all the time. I'm very proud to have a daughter like her. Uh, I was hoping that Dina will grow up to be like her mother someday. I'm sure she will, sir. After all, she's the daughter of a lion and a lioness. My daughter looks up to the First Lady for inspiration and is not just limited to my daughter, sir. She's an inspiration for almost all women in the country. But at the same time, it must be hard for the First Lady as well. All this attention, just as a high-profile life and husband that has great responsibility... You know, it's hard for most of us. I'm hoping Sergei is not like, like a spy or something. Otherwise, uh, maybe... Yeah, I, mean, I guess it's possible. It must be, sir. We sometimes forget the important people in life between all the responsibilities and rush. You know, those we care for. I agree. Sergei continued for after a moment of silence. Have I told you, sir? My son is named George. The doctor said he's very healthy and, and thankfully so is my wife. Uh, you know what? Tell me more about Susan. What kind of person is she? She has a good heart, her family comes from Sarna, and they are a little bit more traditional. I really like her selflessness. Where is Sarna? 
it's in Bergia, which is down here. So she's from this area, which currently has some resistance in the sanctuaries. Selflessness is a respectful trait to have. It should be mutual. That is what matters most. Sergei sighed. I already started thinking about their university education, especially Erika. I want to send her to good private school, but with the current state of the economy, it's going to be hard for us. I only have one. I'm, going to spend, I'm not going to spend all. Sergey, I appreciate you being my driver. I'm not spending all of my money to send your kid to school. We'll fix the economy one way or another. If anyone can, that's you, Mr. President. The car hit a major pothole, and a bump which lifted off offer seats for a second. That's not acceptable. We need to invest in infrastructure here. I agree, sir. We still need to drive back tomorrow unless you use one of the new helicopters. Morake began to approach the hotel. The Hotel West was supposed to be the best hotel in Narbel, a large 25-story main building that was undoubtedly one of the taller and more expensive buildings in the city. It towered over the nearby slums and had been a target for protests when it was first built. The crowd was gathered in front of the hotel with a welcoming committee at the center. As we approached the red carpet entrance, I could see the mayor of Narbel and his top aides. Sergei got out of the car and opened the door. He bowed his head respectively and gestured towards the entrance. No, thank you. Have a good day, Mr. President. As soon as I left the vehicle, uh, the fresh air Narbel filled my lungs. Almost immediately, everybody present in the crowd flocked over to me with an uh, extensive display of courtesy, smiles, and handshakes while I donned the mask of a politician. A mask that I was very used to. Okay, so we got a briefing here. I'm going to do a double check, make sure there's nothing new. I mean, it's a lot of information that they want me to kind of, uh... I mean, uh, okay. Public capacity is used, those are still using largely 1920s technology. I arrived in the meeting room to talk with, uh, Cario and Pascal. Before beginning, I took a moment to appreciate the view from the balcony. The mountain and our bell were completely covered in snow. Have I met you before? I don't think so. While I memorized the scenery, Pascal Benuel walked up to me. My Minister of Health is, ironically, somewhat poorly. Having gained a few pounds since a bracelet at a best sell writer, but his authority on social affairs could not be questioned. Such a spectacular view. Sierra Waldra, the Minister of Education, joined us on the balcony dressed in a sky blue pants suit. Her preference for trousers over dress had made her the subject of much of palace gossip, but it didn't seem to bother her in the slightest. Spectacular indeed. But if you look in the opposite direction, you will see the souls decades of neglect into the city. Most of the people living in our bell are workers, farmers, and the wives and their wives and children. They're breaking their backs for close to no pay, all thanks to greedy corporations. My intention is to help the working class. I'm glad we see eye to eye on the issue. If you look past the view, you can see the real problem. Real problems like poverty. Pascal nodded gravely. This was a subject he knew quite a bit about himself. His best known book it was about the plight of the sordid, less fortunate, drawing from his own past growing in squalor. Well put, Mr. Walda. Miss Walda, I don't need to tell you about my own experience with poverty, but I'm sure, uh, but I'm sure you have to. Am I right, Mr. President? You've all gone through difficult times. True, but some lives are more difficult than others, like ours was, and it's still hundreds of thousands in Sorland. You don't have to be, uh, you don't have to be born uh, poor to sympathize with the plight of the impoverished. Much as you don't have to be born as a woman to recognize Sorland's need for prior parity. Among the sexes, Sarah's tone got serious. Isn't it time for Horsland addressed these issues? Rather than bowing to the wishes of the hawks and fear mongers in the establishment, and averted yet more resources to military and law enforcement, our welfare, uh, our welfare, healthcare, and education systems have been decaying since the recession. Sorland's poor communities are losing hope. Hopelessness and a lack of opportunities can drive people to extreme solutions. We're seeing increased crime, domestic violence, rising inequality between men and women. Lilith Graf, she is the Chief of Justice, I'm pretty sure. The only can stop the recession, create jobs and growth. The economic situation does play a huge role in living standards. Urban and rural disparities are stark, and the recession hit the weakest harder. We can't fix the economy by ourselves. We have to educate people and let them create new opportunities too. There's another subject I want to mention. I have been working on improving the rights of workers in the country and have proposed a draft bill that is currently being reviewed by our party. Mr. Calvin has already backed me and gave his support. Sorland uh, has fallen behind most countries on the subject and it is my responsibility to ensure that it is not the case. 
So you are a member of the yeah, you're a member of the USP. You are the leader of the personal faction of the party. Okay. Mm. I agree. We need to. Yeah, we need to improve the standards for our workers. Exactly. So it must provide for its own people to move forward. It's also a matter of life and death. Every decade we hear some horrific accident due to employees' disregard for their worker safety. So, would you back the bill if it arrives on your desk, Mr. President? I'll be very interested in supporting it once it's finished. I'm relieved to hear this. He smiled. I'm getting a little cold out here. Let's head inside and continue our discussions. The meeting room was already prepared for state business. Small gifts for each of us have been placed by the table by the municipality. We looked to, uh, we took our seats. Let's start with your health overview, Pascal. As you wish, Mr. President. Sorland has had a free healthcare system, except for a few private hospitals operating under it. Most of the populace receives adequate treatment. Health issues primarily appear in rural areas due to the lack of quality services. I'm doing my best to ensure the citizens of all ages receive the best healthcare they can. I also personally want to solve the high infant and uh, maternal mortality rate. What is life expectancy? Life expectancy is 65 years, and infant mortality rate is worryingly 85 per one. That seems that's really bad. That's ho that's horrible. Be sure we're doing everything we can to save mothers and their newborn. Those mothers are those numbers are saddening indeed. I agree. We must do everything we can. We're working very hard improving the quality of services. I mean, how many doctors and nurses are employed? We have 31.594 doctors and 73, these are very specific numbers, and 73.680 nurses working for the Ministry of Health. Oh no, this, this okay, it's not here. It's 31,590 doctors and 73,680 nurses working for the Ministry of Health. So the high number, what I think is, I don't want to be rude, but of those numbers, how many are in urban and rural era, areas? You know, it's a good point. It just shows that per 10,000 people in urban areas, there are about 11 doctors, while in rural areas, there are only three. Treatment time is too high to the low number of doctors in rural areas, which are barely getting any proper coverage. I mean, how many hospital beds are there? There are 10 beds per 10,000 citizens, which is a very good number, according to our comparisons with our neighbors. We see a low number... We have we see a lower number in countries of Angola and Welland, but obviously can't match Lespia or Valislad. And Agnolia and Welland are hardly countries to take as a standard, but it's good to know we aren't in a huge health risk yet. Okay, thank you, Pascal, for your in-depth uh, briefing. It's much appreciated. And I want to hear about the education system. With pleasure. Swordish education is free, but we have a very outdated system that I want to reform. The other important issue is the lack of access to education in rural areas, especially for young girls. Your administration has the power to solve both these problems. My highest priority is to get enough funding to be able to build schools in rural areas, while I cleanse our education system of its nationalistic indoctrination and sexist teachings. How many teachers and students do we have? Currently, there are about 5 million students, 3 million in primary, 1 million in secondary, and 1 million in tertiary. There are about 160,316 teachers. That seems like a really bad ratio. Sorlin is full of young and bright minds. We should be striving to make education available for all. I think there needs to be a change in the way we, in the way of thought, we should help children to question and educate themselves. What's the literacy rate? The literacy rate of Sorland is 80%. This is a very good indicator of future growth, but it needs to increase. It's also far lower among girls than boys. If I remember correctly, the most illiterate areas are Bergia and Agland. That is correct. Olafian skews statistics for the Nargis region, which has a very vast number of illiterate citizens. This underlines my point about the lack of access to education. What about the difference between urban and rural education? Urban areas are three times have three times the number of uh, schools per 10,000 people compared to rural areas. Rural areas also suffer from a lack of teachers. I can imagine teachers not preparing desolate areas for work. Salaries for teachers are very low here. We need to increase their pay to give them more incentive. Thank you, uh, Sarah. We can fill in the blanks from here. I believe that is everything. Sarah stood up and moved towards the window. She took a deep breath. What is it, Sierra? Look at this impoverished city. The streets full of potholes, the hospital barely functioning, the school half open. This is not just about Seoul or even Alfonso's failings. This decay of Seoul in this forgotten regions has been going on for decades due to structural corruption, which is fueled by capitalism.
We're here to change that trend and provide for the people. That remains to be seen. I'm working on a new education system, and your support would be welcome. Sierra sat back, back, sat back down inside. One way or another, we need to transform. Read and uncheck capitalism. It will be not magically provide for the people. Well, what are your plans? My plans require an increasing government budget. I aim to solve the problems that are highlighted with the allocated money. By building up schools in these less fortunate rural areas and through fundamental changes in our education system, I will the potential for all of our children, boys and girls alike. Improving the situation in rural areas would be uh, indeed a good idea. The investment would be the future of Sorland. Imagine the untapped potential of our, of our youth unlocked. The knowledge and wealth they have and will generate. Wouldn't a promotion of private education help create additional funds? Yes, but at what cost? I'm not a supporter of the private sector in education. Because at the end of the day, they're focused on profit first. But what are you working towards, Pascal? I personally want to improve the low quality of healthcare in the rural areas. So create a draft plan to increase the salaries of doctors and to upgrade the equipment to the hospitals. I can do more with increased budget. Additionally, a privatization plan to remote private investment in the healthcare system could allocate extra funds. Um... I personally promise that our health systems will, uh, will be improved in our term. I fully support you, Pascal. This is one of the reasons I'm optimistic about the upcoming budget uh, debates. With extra funds, we can build hospitals where necessary and expand the quality of our services. I do hope to create a competition and increase the quality of healthcare with privatization efforts. The private healthcare system would increase the price of treatment and make access worse for the average citizen. Besides, I believe we have decided to promote a more planned economy. My expectation for our government is what we understand, and we need to focus on the need of the people. We are the elected representatives of our people, and we will pri prioritize their needs. That's reassuring to hear. I don't want to sound cynical, but almost all governments keep making the same promises. We must show that we're different uh, through our actions. I think we covered all necessary subjects. Thank you for your time. I do hope we won't repeat the same mistakes again and again. Have a good day, Mr. President. The ministers last night attend the other offices of business, other official business in the city. The weather was relatively cold, but I not keep a group of S USP supporters uh, to come out and cheer us in the street. Just looking at the citizen attire, it is easy to understand the current state of the bell. Some people were wearing clothes a few sizes too large. Some kids did not even have shoes. Yet, they were still hope in their eyes. They were excited to see their president in their city. So what do we got next? I mean, the railway's like halfway done. And we can ban youth organizations. The investigation of the influence of the Young Swords and the Red Youth organization on the post-assassination arrests have concluded. Both organizations haven't officially organized a call for legal actions, but several low- to mid-level leaders from both have links to insightful actions that led to death, injuries, and instability. This allows us to ban the organizations. We can we cannot ban anybody. I think we're gonna let, you know let, let's ban the Young Swords. There we go. I'm assuming that's gonna show up here. Okay, but I think for now, this is going to be a good time for us to end this episode. So, thanks everybody for watching. My name is Ben Anselm. If you enjoyed, my thumbs up. Now, do a thumbs down. You want to see more, subscribe, and goodbye.